Let's make a custom widget. But custom widgets are a little bit more complicated than functions or actions. So I want to take one minute to explain each of the lines of the boilerplate code so you have a good handle on what's going on. So let's just give our widget a name first. Maybe this just generates a box, OK? So then we're going to go in here to see our boilerplate code and just copy it into the editor. OK, right away, you can see that we have two classes. And that's because in Flutter, there are fundamentally two kinds of widgets, stateful and stateless widgets. A stateless widget would be one that doesn't change. Now, you can make changes to it, but it won't change while you're running the app. A stateful widget will change or can change. And custom widgets in Flutterflow are stateful widgets. And to create stateful widgets, you have two classes. The top one is to handle the basic configuration of the widget. So you can see things here like height and width and another class to handle the state. OK, so let's jump into these and see what these do. So of course, classes are blueprints for the objects that they produce. And in this blueprint, you'll have the properties and the methods that that object has. And here are two of those properties, a width property that is a double and a height property. And you can see over here that these are required. And once we get into building our own custom widget, we'll define more parameters that would be added in here. OK, so those are our properties, also called instance variables or fields. Next, let's move up to this thing up here. And this is called a constructor or constructor function because it's just a function. And it's the function you call to create or instantiate this object. So wherever we put this custom widget, when we inspect the code, we will see something like this. And that's what creates the object, which is in this case a widget, based on this blueprint. But you can see we got some things coming in here. And these are parameter lists. These parameters get passed in just like other parameters when your object is created. So the first thing is a key. And in Flutter, a key is a special parameter that's used to preserve state and differentiate widgets when working with collections or lists and is also used for running tests. Next, we've got our height and width parameters, but they have this this appended to it. And that's because we're not just passing in the width and height to this new box object, but we're setting it equal to that specific boxes width and height property. This refers to not this class, but to the object that gets instantiated or created by this class. Next, after this colon, we are calling this super function. This is called an initializer list. And what super does is that whenever you have a class that's extended, super is calling the constructor of this class up here. So calling super is like calling this box constructor. And here we're just passing the key over here into our super class so that they're connected. This is just how the Flutter framework works. OK, great. One last thing. We get down to this override right here. This is called an annotation. It's not actually necessary, but it's become a standard practice because what this is indicating is that you are overriding something in this class right here. So in this class, there is a method, a function called create state, and we are overriding it here. And you add that annotation to indicate that you're doing so intentionally, that this isn't a mistake. And what are you overriding it with? Well, you're overriding it with this right here. Well, what's that? Well, this is another constructor function. That's what's right down here. And you can see that it is returning this box state object. Now, if you see these little underscores here, this is just Dart's way of making something private. Private meaning it's only accessible in this file. OK, so this is returning this state object we see right here, which is coming from this class right here. And this class needs what's called a generic. So we pass in our box class because that's how these classes are linked up. OK, great. So at the end of here, this is going to instantiate the object based on this class. So what does this class do? Once again, we are overriding something. We are overriding this build method from this state class. And this build method will return a widget. And you can see inside the function body right here, we are returning a widget, a container. And this is important to keep in mind when you're writing custom functions, because this is where you will do most of your work. You have to return one widget.
Now, of course, that widget can contain other widgets, but at the top level, it has to return one. So keep in mind, this build function has to return one widget. And lastly, we're passing into this build function, this build context, which we're calling context here, just by convention, sometimes it's called CTX, it doesn't really matter. And build context is an object that has information about where that widget is in the widget tree. Okay, awesome. So that's what happens in a custom widget. So let's build one. And I found this cool library on PubDev called Animated Text Kit. So let's use this. So the first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need this dependency. So we copy this to the clipboard and we can come over here to our pub spec dependencies and add it in. And let's refresh this to add a project. Great. Next, let's take a look at our example to see what parameters we're gonna need. So if we scroll down, let's just look at a cool usage right here. Okay, yeah, that looks like a cool one. So you can see we've got a lot of different properties that we could parameterize, that is make dynamic by creating parameters that can be passed in. But let's just use these ones down here where we have three different texts that rotate through. So we're just gonna need three texts. Let's do that. So let's add a parameter here and we're just gonna call it word one. It's gonna be a string and word two and word three. Beautiful. Now we're ready to replace this boilerplate that we had with the boilerplate that includes our parameters. Okay, so let's come over here. You can see that we've got these new parameters right here. So let's copy that to the editor. Awesome. All right, so next let's grab the example code. So let's back over here and we're just gonna grab this whole row, copy that. And so we come down to our tainer and we are just going to replace that and immediately see a problem. We get some red squiggly lines here and when we look at the message, it says that the method animated text kit isn't defined. And that's because we actually haven't imported this library into this file. So we need our import statement like these imports. And we can go grab that from PubDev. So if we just roll up, it'll normally provide the import statement and there it is. So copy that and we can paste it here. And when we scroll down, we can see that those errors went away. Beautiful. So next, we wanna make this dynamic with our own words added. So instead of awesome, optimal, and different, let's add in our parameters. And we access those by widget dot, and then we'll get some auto completion and we can see them there. And immediately we get a problem here. We're getting some error. And when we look at it, it says that the argument type, a nullable string, can't be assigned to the parameter type string. Oh, I see. So it's expecting a string, but this could be null or a string. So we can do a simple null check here. So we open this up and do a null check and set it to empty string and now we're good. Beautiful. So then let's duplicate it with our other words. Awesome. So let's save this and to be able to see it, we have to compile. Great. So we can come over here to preview our widget and let's expand the width, see it more fully. And we have three of the same words. So hello world, bye. Okay, great. So let's put this into a project and see it in action. So we're gonna come over to Builder right here and come over here and here's our custom widget. Let's drop it in and let's give it width and add words world. Beautiful. And because we've already compiled this widget, we can view it in the Builder and that's building custom widgets in Flutterflow.